there. It's story time. Remember what chapter four was called? Cats and Gowns. <laughs> I skipped all the way back to room nine from the principal's office. When I got to room nine, my whole face got happy because guess who was talking to my teacher? It was Gus Filoni, that's who. And Gus Filoni is my favorite janitor. I zoomed right over to that guy. Gus Filoni, Gus Filoni, it is a joy to see you, I said. And so what brings you here anyway? Gus Filoni patted my head. I had an important delivery to make. Just then my bestest friend Lucille came running up to me. She pointed to a big stack of boxes. It's cats. Cats and gowns, Junie B, she shouted. Gus Filoni brought us cats and gowns. She twirled me all around. I heard him talking to the teacher. The cats and gowns are right in those boxes. Everyone is getting one for graduation, she said. I jumped up and down at that wonderful news, because who doesn't love cats? Cats and gowns, I hollered. Cats and gowns, hollered room nine. Mrs. sat down very slowly in her chair. Then Gus Filoni patted her shoulder and said the words, good luck. Mrs. said for room nine to please stop shouting. I'm sorry, boys and girls, but Lucille did not hear me correctly. No one in room nine is getting a cat and a gown for graduation. Room nine did a loud groan. Oh. Then what are we getting exactly, I asked. Caps, caps and gowns, said Mrs. You're all getting a cap and gown for graduation, not a cat and gown. No, 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 said Lucille. I heard you say cat, teacher. I know you did, I know you did. Mrs. said for Lucille to hush. Then she passed out the boxes to all the children. I looked inside my box real curious. Then I kept looking and looking because something was not right in there. Uh, Mrs., I think my cap got run over by a truck. It's flat. Mrs. laughed. Then she came to my table. She unfolded my cap and she put it right on my head. Hey, what do you know? It fits, I said. After that, all of us put on our caps and gowns and we all skipped around the room. There they are, all skipping around the room with their caps and gowns. <laughs> I'm going to let you take these home, Mrs. said today, but please do not play with them on the bus and please with them, do not play with them at home either. These caps and gowns are white, okay? and white material can get soiled very easily. Oh, chapter five is called A Million Bucks. Well, chapter four was short. Let's go ahead and read chapter five today. A Million Bucks. Me and my bestest friend named Grace rode the bus home together. We held our boxes very tight on our laps and we didn't open them. We are being careful about our graduation gowns, aren't we, Grace, I said. We are being careful not to soil them. Yes, said Grace, we are. I looked down at my box. I am very proud of us for not opening these things, I said. I am very proud of us too, said Grace. We rode and rode. I did a sigh. <sighs> it's too bad we can't just peek at them a little though, isn't it, Grace? I said. One teensy peek wouldn't even hurt anything, I bet. Grace still didn't say anything. I tapped on her. Okay, here's what I'm thinking, Grace. I'm thinking we should do one little peek and that's all. What do you say, friend? Grace made her voice very loud just then. No, Junie B, no, we are not allowed to. Can't you follow orders? Do you want to soil these things? I did a huffy breath at her. Huh. But peeking will not even soil them, Grace, I said back. Peeking is just looking with your eyes, only faster. Only too bad for me because Grace kept on saying no, no, no. 
and so I had to wait for her to get off the bus before I peeked. After she was gone, I looked in my box, speedy quick, and what do you know? I didn't even soil anything. I got off the bus and I ran to my house. My grandma, Helen Miller, was babysitting my brother, Ollie. She was feeding him a snack in his high chair. Grandma Miller, Grandma Miller, I got my cap and gown, and it's right in here in this box, I said. Would you like me to try it on for you, Grandma? Huh? Would you? Grandma Miller clapped her hands. Of course I would, she said. Try it on right now. Okie dokie, I said. Then I quick put on my cap and gown, and I danced all around. See me, Grandma? See what I look like? I look like a graduation girl, I said. I hopped all around Ollie's high chair. My teacher said not to play in this, but hopping around is not the same as playing, I said. Just then I heard the front door open, and hooray, mother was home early from work. Her whole mouth came open when she saw me. Oh my goodness, she said, look how cute you are. I know it, mother, I know I am cute. I look like a million bucks in this thing. I twirled all around in front of her. See me twirling, mother? Twirling is not the same as playing. After I stopped twirling, I fell down on the floor. Falling on the floor is what comes after twirling. It can't really be helped. Mother picked me up. Maybe you should take this off before you get it soiled, she said. No, mother, no, I said. I want to keep it on, please, please. I quick ran to Ollie's high chair, and I ducked down behind it. Ollie peeked around at me. He had sloppy stuff on his face. I am not a sloppy baby like Ollie, I said. I won't get this dirty, I promise. But Mother shook her head. Mm -mm. I'm sorry, Junie B, but it's just not a good idea to play in your gown. After that, Mother and Grandma Miller blocked the high chair and I couldn't run away again. Shoot, I said, I'm surrounded. Mother took my graduation outfit off of me and she put it back in the box. And then she put the box way top of the refrigerator. See? Where Junie B couldn't reach it. Mm. We'll keep it up here for safekeeping, said Mother. Mother said, now let's go to your room and think about what the teacher said. My stuffed animals were in my room, so I went to my room. They looked very glum. Glum means not happy. They looked very glum. I felt glum too. I said to them, everybody thinks I'm a sloppy baby, but I'm not. I don't think you're a sloppy baby, said my stuffed elephant named Philip Johnny Bob. <laughs> Her stuffed elephant's named Philip Johnny Bob. That's a funny name. I don't think you're a sloppy baby either, said Raggedy Ann. And Raggedy Andy said, I wish your mother didn't put that cap and gown on top of the refrigerator. Yeah, I wish she didn't either, said Philip Johnny Bob. In fact, I wish you could get it down from there so all of us could see you in it. After that, I thought and thought, and then I lifted up Philip Johnny Bob's soft ear, and I whispered in it, maybe I can. She is whispering in Philip Johnny Bob's ear. Uh oh. Chapter six. Pooped and thirsty. Hmm. We'll have to see what that's about. Do you think that's a good idea that Philip Johnny Bob had for her to go to the refrigerator and get the box down? Mm mm mm. Well, we'll find out what happens on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.